Health Care's, Care's Tina Verona. Verona. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us for this, for this my Facebook, Facebook discussion. discussion. Today, Today we are talking, talking about, about a procedure that was, was once meant, meant only for high-risk patients with aortic, aortic stenosis, but just, just recently, the Structural Heart Team here at Hartford, Hartford, Hartford Hospital, Hospital was selected as one of only 35 hospitals in the country to perform this surgery on even more patients. I'm so happy to be joined by cardiac surgeon Dr. David Yaffe. He's here to explain and answer some of your questions live. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. So first, let's start with the basics. What is aortic stenosis? Sure. So the aortic valve is one of the four valves inside the heart. They're one-way doors. They let the blood out, and then don't let the blood come back in. The aortic valve is valve number four. It's basically the last doorway before the blood leaves the heart and goes to the rest of the body. Normally, it's about the size of a silver dollar. But, but as we get older, older those doors, doors open and close with every heartbeat, heartbeat the hinges get stiff. Mm-hmm. They, don't they don't open, open as well, and that opening gets smaller and smaller. Now, now aortic stenosis, stenosis is exactly that. that. Stenosis, stenosis means narrowing, so it's a narrowing of the valve. Basically, that valve doesn't open all the way, and, and it, makes it makes it harder for the heart, heart to get blood out to the rest of the body. body. Now, now, the, the procedure, procedure that we're, we're talking about, about is, it's, it's a mouthful. mouthful. It's, it's transcatheter aortic, aortic valve um, uh, replacement. Uh, replacement. Yes. Tavar, Tavar, known as Tavar. Tavar. So, so typically, we just, just celebrated a lot of milestones with Tavar, Tavar. The, the first being, being the 1,000 case uh, recently at Hartford, Hartford Hospital of a high-risk high risk patient. Now, now someone, someone who could not tolerate open heart, heart surgery would have, have Tavar. So, so talk to us about how Tavar was another, another option that, that you could, could utilize for patients at high risk, risk for open, open heart, heart surgery. surgery. Sure. So, so you know, open, open heart surgery is the, the gold standard, standard for aortic valve replacement. replacement. Basically, so it's going, going to the chest, chest removing the old valve, and, and putting, putting a new valve in its place. place. The, the TAVR procedure, as you mentioned, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, is a method by the way we can replace the valve without big incisions, without having to go inside the patient's chest. Basically, Basically taking, taking a valve, valve running, running it up through, through a small catheter into the heart, just like, like a, you would have with a stent for a blockage in an artery, open, open up, up the valve inside, inside the heart, heart and take, take away, away that blockage. blockage. Now, now the, the, benefit the benefit of that is obviously there's, there's no, no big incisions, incisions the recovery is faster, faster, it's not, not open heart surgery. surgery. We're, We're able, able to do that for people who otherwise wouldn't have been able to get treated for their aortic or someone who is either too old or not, not healthy, healthy enough, enough to undergo, undergo a major, major operation, operation can now, now get, get treatment, um, which, which can, can improve, improve their symptoms, symptoms um, um, kind of can get, get them back to their, their you know, back, back to their, their lives with, with you know, feeling, feeling better mm-hmm. and, and hopefully living longer. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's giving, giving them, them an option now, now whereas, whereas before they, they did not have an option, option um, to have uh, open heart surgery. We recently did a story with a gentleman who was 96 years old and had the TAVR procedure and just recently celebrated his 100th birthday. Day. So and that's still going strong. And, and still, it's, it's, it's incredible. incredible. So um, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's offering, offering patients like that new hope, hope and another, another option that, that wasn't previously, previously there. there. Exactly. Um, um, now, now recently, Hartford, Hartford Hospital now, now as we mentioned in the introduction, one of 35 hospitals throughout the country to take part in, in a low, low risk, risk patient. patient. So, so I get high, high risk patient, but why a low risk patient? Sure. So. You know, you know, when we first started, started doing this procedure, um, it was, you know, you know, it was an option for patients who were too high risk, risk or mm-hmm. high risk mm-hmm. to undergo mm-hmm. surgery. We had a less invasive option to allow them to fix their valve mm-hmm. with, with, you know, less, less insult and easier mm-hmm. recovery. Mm-hmm. What this study looked at was we're trying, trying to determine, determine if, you know, this procedure is as good as surgery in patients who are low risk. Low risk. Now, now, when, when we, we say low risk for open heart surgery, surgery, we're talking about patients who can safely undergo open heart surgery. surgery. That, mm-hmm. you know, if someone, someone comes, comes in with aortic stenosis, stenosis mm-hmm. and we determine that their valve needs to be replaced, we then mm-hmm. determine by, you know, their, their kind of age, their medical history, history t- certain tests, tests that are performed, performed you know, what, what their, their risk is for undergoing open heart, heart surgery. surgery. Mm-hmm. If, if they're, they're low, low risk or low risk of having severe complications, complications from surgery, then, then, then you know, up until, until now, the only option was open heart surgery, surgery. Mm-hmm. Which, which is an excellent you know, option. They long-term long results are fantastic. The patients feel better, better they, they do well, well and, and you know, can, can live for a very long time, time after surgery, surgery with no limitations, basically getting, getting back to their normal lives. lives. Mm-hmm. What this trial was looking at now that it's completed and it's been approved is to determine if 
the TAVR, the TAVR procedure is an option for these patients as well. Is there a way that we can replace the aortic valve without having to undergo open heart surgery? Now, open heart surgery is that still considered the gold standard? It is, and, and for many patients, it is still a better option. Um, um, it's, you know, it is the gold standard for valve replacement. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, after, After you've undergone, undergone testing and kind of, and kind of figured out what, what needs, needs to be done, done then, then we, we go through, through and determine what, what best option it is. Right. Um, you know, you know, so, so if somebody, somebody comes into my office with their aortic stenosis mm -hmm. and they're, they're low risk, risk for surgery, for surgery. Mm -hmm. um, we will we then, then go through, through kind of a number of tests, tests to determine what the risks are for both surgery and for TAVR, looking for certain features, you know, the shape of the valve. Basically, basically and if, if there's, there's any blockages, blockages in the arteries, different, different things we're looking at to determine whether or not surgery is a better option or the TAVR procedure is a better option. Right, right. Better right. Option. right. Um, you, know, you know, we have, we have to, to compare the two because, because there, there are different things, things that, you know, everyone's different. different. Right. Some people will be better off with surgery. Mm -hmm. Some people will be better off with TAVR. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, there's not as clear cut. Sometimes it requires a discussion. So, you know, that requires... You know, you know, speaking, speaking to, to the, the patients, patients learning, learning about them, them figuring, figuring out what, what the best option is for them. And now that we have, now this is, the TAVR procedure has been approved for low risk patients, we have that option and we can have that discussion. Whereas before, you know, surgery was our only option. What, I, and I know that um, we, we've just started participating in this study, so data is very preliminary if, if even there is data, but um, you know the data, you know the long-term results of, of open heart surgery is, you know, 15 to 20 years, which we were talking earlier, that has increased um, uh, the longevity of open heart surgery, but you don't, just don't have the data yet for the TAVR procedure, is that correct? Correct, yeah, so we, you know, open heart surgery is, mm -hmm. you know, we been doing it for many many years and right. we know that with the current generation of valves that we have and you know the the current technology and how we do the procedures that you know with the newest generation of valves um, I'm talking about bioprosthetic valves either mm -hmm. you know cow valves or pig valves that we you know we expect them to last 15 to 20 years before right. you know anything needs to be done so we know the ex that open heart surgery has excellent long-term results mm -hmm. with the TAVR procedure even though the the type of valve is similar it's still made out of animal tissue mm -hmm. the way it's constructed and the way it's delivered is different and we just don't know kind of the long-term results um, you know in the studies that we've done so far we have short-term data and the data out to one to two years is excellent yeah you know we right. know that it's you know the results in the patients who were selected for the study mm -hmm had excellent results out to, you know, in the first one to two years, at least as good as surgery. And even the high-risk patients, too, in that category have had great results Exactly, as exactly. Well. And it's just the long-term that we don't know because we haven't been doing it for long enough. Right, but so far so good. Yeah. Dr. Yaffe, we have a question from Rebecca. She asks on Facebook, are there any health conditions like diabetes, say, that would prevent someone from having this kind of procedure? Thanks for that question. That's an excellent question. Um, the short answer is, Yes and no. So as far as kind of medical conditions, diabetes, hypertension, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, kidney disease, other things that can increase your risk of having surgery, um, often those are things that will lean us more towards high risk. make your risk of surgery a little higher and lean us more towards the TAVR procedure. Mm -hmm. So it actually, they don't prevent you from undergoing this procedure. Mm -hmm. um, things that would make the TAVR procedure not a good option are kind of anatomical reasons. If there's you know blockage somewhere that prevents us from getting the valve in, mm -hmm. or there or the shape of your valve is better suited for surgery, those are the things that we look at that will help determine whether surgery or TAVR is a better option. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time, it's you know every it's it's a good question because everyone is different everyone that's is different, and you know right. we, that decision needs to is individualized and has to be determined on a patient by patient basis what about if someone had open heart surgery say 15 years ago um, could they be a candidate for for the TAVR procedure a lot of times uh, yes I mean it depends on what procedure they've had say for example they've had their aortic valve replaced mm -hmm. um, you know it's been 18 years yeah. they're coming in their their the valve they had a cow valve done 18 years ago and it's starting to wear out mm -hmm. it's either gotten narrowed or it's leaking and it's just it's time for it to be replaced mm -hmm. traditionally we would require another operation going back in going you know through the old incision going back in and replacing it 
with the TAVR procedure, we can actually put the TAVR valve inside hmm. that old valve. So oh. that valve that they had put in 18 years ago, mm -hmm. we can put the TAVR valve inside that valve kind of push push the leaflets out of the way and it works in a very similar manner. So that valve that wouldn't have to be it removed. It doesn't need to be removed. It just it stays there and the new valve goes inside. And just of it. takes over. Correct. Interesting. Laura asks how often should my physician monitor my aortic valve for changes in its area? Thanks for the question, Laura. That's an that is also an excellent question, Laura. So you know if you have issues with your aortic valve, if you have known stenosis or if it's leaking, um, but it's not enough to to merit anything being done at this time, mm -hmm. um, then that's something that you would follow up with your cardiologist um, with. And generally, you know, unless there's a change, you're having increased symptoms, or there's kind of a change in how you're feeling, typically it's it's once a year. Mm -hmm. um, they'll get, you know, they'll monitor, listen for a murmur, they'll get echocardiograms um, to take a, to basically to look at the valve and see if there's any changes. Um, if you have any clinical changes, if you're feeling worse or you notice something new, then that's something you would want to let you know your your doctor know about and they could look into it further Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another um, question from um, Janelli, I believe. Hello, there. Are, um, how young or what instance would you say you should get your heart health checked out to know if you would need such a surgery? Thanks for the question. That that is an excellent question, Janelli. Um, so there is no set age for when you should kind of get your heart checked, um, and it depends a little bit on whether or not you have any family history yeah, of heart right. disease. You know, if you know that heart disease runs in your family, then and it's something that should get you know looked into earlier mm -hmm. for valves specifically um, your primary care provider um, you know will listen to your heart will listen for murmurs if they hear something you know abnormal then that's something that would get looked into earlier um, otherwise there's no kind of set age when you need to start getting your heart checked out if you have no symptoms if you know your primary care provider has doesn't hear any murmurs there's nothing kind of abnormal mm -hmm. um, then there's not really any reason to get you know kind of more invasive tests or more specific tests that, but those are the screening tests that your you know your primary medical doctor or provider would would use to kind of to determine that I want to ask you um, how Hartford Hospital was selected to participate in this study just one of a, a select few of hospitals across the country to participate in this low risk uh, study uh, how how was Hartford Hospital selected sure so um, Part of the way that they determine who gets involved in these studies is a combination of expertise in the area. So we were, you know, involved in the original trials of, you know, the, the first generation the of these valves mm -hmm. with the high risk and extreme risk patients. And so we've been doing this procedure for, you know, over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so that, that was part of it. You know, we've always been involved in the trials. We have more experience than, you know, a lot of other hospitals would otherwise have. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and part of it is having kind of, you know, the, like I said, the expertise and the patients to it that need the procedure. Yeah. So a popular question we're getting on Facebook from both Rebecca and Casey, uh, what's the recovery like for a procedure like this? Sure. So that is, you know, for people having the procedure, that's probably the, the most question, important yes. question. <laughs> um, so that's the first question that comes up. Um, so compared to open heart surgery, um, the recovery is obviously faster. Yeah. You know, typically when you have the TAVR procedure, you come in the morning of the procedure. Mm -hmm. the procedure takes about two hours or so. Mm -hmm. um, you go to the recovery room for a couple hours, you spend the night in the hospital, mm -hmm. and then and it's usually about one to three days in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many of our patients go home the next day. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if there, you know, if there's things we have to keep an eye on or you know, there's other, you know, other things, other reasons that they need to be in the hospital to stay a little bit longer, but generally one to three days in the hospital. And then when they go home, um, it's about two weeks to full recovery. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, no heavy lifting, nothing, you know, right. nothing really strenuous for the first couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that the, that the, basically the access sites, the, the small incisions where the valve goes in have healed. Mm -hmm. But after that, um, basically back, go back to everything Normal that you're activities. used to doing before. Yeah, yeah. without any deficits, I would imagine. Well, correct. Like and you'll feel better. Yeah. You know, so I'm most patients have no limitations from a surgical standpoint mm -hmm. two weeks after the procedure. Yep. And then 
they will continue to feel better you know over the next few months as their heart gets used to the new valve their right. body gets used to the better blood flow the symptoms they were they're having the reason right. that they came in will continue to improve and they'll not only be back to normal but better than they were before. So you're talking a few days in the hospital, a couple of weeks to recover before resuming your normal activities for the TAVR procedure. What about for open heart surgery? So for open heart surgery, you know, that is is kind of, it takes longer. Yeah. You know, that's the benefit of the mm -hmm. TAVR procedure. Even though open heart surgery is the gold standard and has excellent mm -hmm. results, it takes longer. Yeah. Um, you know, with open heart surgery, generally in the hospital, three to five days mm -hmm. instead of one to three days. Mm -hmm. And then it takes a couple months to recover instead right. of a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's just because there's more that has to heal. The incisions right. are bigger and it just takes longer for the body, for the body to heal. Um, another question, uh, Laura on Facebook, uh, what medication should you stop taking prior to this procedure? I would imagine maybe some folks take baby aspirin or could be on blood thinners. Right. So it's, <clears throat> That's, it's a little bit of a complicated question because everyone's on different medications right. and there's no way I'm going to be able to right. list all the, the medications. <laughs> but that's something that if you were being evaluated for the procedure and we were planning on doing the TAVR procedure, um, we would work with you, go through all of your medications, pick out ones that needed to be stopped, whether it was for the procedure such as blood thinners or for things that could interact with the anesthetic, things like that. So everyone, that gets individualized for every patient. So you shouldn't stop anything you know, on your own. That's something that you would discuss with your doctor and that would the plan would be made beforehand so that there was no no question no questions um, so dr. Yaffe we have a couple of comments Helen says she had aortic valve uh, put in at Hartford Hospital four years ago Helen thanks for commenting we appreciate that and Jeannie oh. says my husband had this procedure he has been very happy with the results thanks Excellent. Jeannie for writing that in we love to hear that yeah. and then Laura has a follow-up question is Taver considered major surgery it's minimally invasive, but so right. It's so so that right? is a good question. Yeah. So we consider the TAVR procedure a procedure mm -hmm. um, because you know it's that's one of those things where surgery has is changing, mm -hmm. has changed, and is changing. This is a minimally invasive way to replace the aortic valve. Mm -hmm. So there's no big incision. So in the traditional sense, it's not surgery. Because right. there's there's no real cutting, there's no sewing, there's right. it's not your traditional surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so from that standpoint, it's more of a procedure. However, we're going in and out of arteries inside the heart, replacing mm -hmm. a valve inside the heart. So it is, you know, it's a major procedure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that there are risks involved, um, even though it's very safe. You know, it's it is. I would it consider it a major surgery. procedure. Yeah. It is. You know, it is an operation or procedure on your heart whether or not you know just the way we get there is much less invasive mm -hmm. but as a cardiac surgeon though this um, again we talked about options but this has to uh, make you feel good because you're able to offer this option to patients that you know couldn't otherwise have this procedure so it does it allows us to treat yeah. many more people many more patients than we were able to treat before you know we we used to have to turn away patients right. who were severely symptomatic and mm -hmm. would have felt better with their valve replaced, but just because they were not healthy enough to tolerate open heart surgery. And this allows us to provide, mm -hmm. um, you know, that treatment that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to do before. So it's, it's been a, a very, you know, very good advancement in medicine. Yeah, absolutely. We have some questions from readers at the Hartford Current. This is an interesting question. Could this procedure be performed on one who has COPD, has lived on one lung for many years? Great question. That is an excellent question. Um, so the, the short answer is yes. Um, you know, we've done that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the benefit of the TAVR procedure is a lot of times we can do the procedure without general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. It's done with sedation. So you're, you know, not awake. You don't feel anything. You don't kind of remember anything, but mm -hmm. it's not general anesthesia. It doesn't require a breathing tube. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot safer for mm -hmm. patients with, with COPD. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone has to be individualized. We get, we go through a battery of tests beforehand. We would get pulmonary function tests or breathing tests to kind of determine how severe the COPD is mm -hmm. and whether or not we felt it was safe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's something that would have to be, you know, we look into all of those things beforehand to make sure that the TAVR procedure can be done safely and mm -hmm. that the, you know, and provide good results. Mm -hmm. um, but many times it can. What about patients um, who have an implantable defibrillator or pacemaker? Mm -hmm. Can they be a candidate for TAVR? They can. Um, and it really has 
you know, there's no downside to having a pacemaker or defibrillator mm -hmm. for TAVR. It actually, in some cases, almost makes the procedure or the recovery a little easier because mm -hmm. um, it allows us to, it just makes things, you have kind of a backup, backup system right. there that makes right. things a little safer. And so, you know, we would in interrogate or evaluate the pacemaker beforehand, make sure that it's working properly. If any settings needed to be changed before the procedure, mm -hmm. um, then we would do that. And then make sure they you know, the settings are everything's working, goes back to you know normal afterwards. Right. But no problems doing that procedure with right. with the device. In and place. and programming those um, is very uh, precise. I mean, those it, it's you know, not just necessarily maybe one time, but you have to come back a few times just to make sure you've got that right programming. A yes. uh, follow up question on the last question: Though currently evaluation is on an individual basis, are there general guidelines? For low risk, medium risk, and extreme risk, does this procedure replace just one valve? We're getting some great questions That's, here. They're right. Those are very good questions. So the the TAVR procedure, mm -hmm. um, you know, stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's indicated for replacement of a mm -hmm. stenotic aortic valve. Mm -hmm. So a valve that's narrowed, mm -hmm. not leaking. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a valve that's both. It's so, but it's really only, it's indicated for aortic stenosis. Right. Um, you know, it has, there are experimental trials with it where it's being, you know, tried and tested on other, for other valves, mm -hmm. and we will get there, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not, not approved for any other valves yet. It is still only for the aortic valve. Aortic valve. And where do we stand as far as the study on low risk patients? Are we in the middle of that study? Are we almost completed? So We're enrollment for the low risk trial has closed. We're no longer accepting patients into that trial. Um, we, and we have the kind of early early results, the mm -hmm. kind of the one-year results, which are excellent, mm -hmm. um, which is why the government has now approved the TAVR procedure for low-risk patients. Mm -hmm. So anyone who is low-risk can get evaluated for a TAVR procedure, mm -hmm. um, whereas during the trial you had to be enrolled in a trial. Right. Now that the, the preliminary results of the trial are out, um, anyone who has aortic stenosis, whether they're low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk, can be evaluated for TAVR. Mm -hmm. And then once we perform that evaluation, we get the testing, um, you know, the preoperative testing that needs to be done, speak to the patient, learn about their medical history. We'll then work with them and determine what the best option is. For many patients, surgery will still be a better option. Right. Um, it just, it depends on, on a number of factors. Mm -hmm. You know, in addition to age, height, weight, Mm -hmm. um, you know, medical history, mm -hmm. it's the shape of the valve, how many leaflets there are in the valve, the size of the arteries, kind of a lot of different factors go into determining uh, what the best way is to replace the valve. And probably the, the another factor that may go into it would be how did the, the valve narrow to begin with? Could it be hereditary, genetically? Could it be diet? Could it it, does Correct. that play a role? It, it does. Um, you know, so most common form of aortic stenosis is what's called degenerative calcific aortic stenosis. Basically, it's a disease of age. Mm -hmm. The leaflets are very thin tissue mm -hmm. that basically just moves in the bloodstream. And over time, as they move with every beat, you know, every second or more for your entire life, mm -hmm. millions and millions of times, they start to get stiff, they harden, they mm -hmm. calcify, and that's mm -hmm. the most common form of aortic stenosis. Mm -hmm. There are other forms. Some people are born with aortic stenosis. Right. Sometimes they're born with uh, only two leaflets instead of three, or the leaflets are stuck together. Um, in those cases, sometimes the TAVR procedure is just is not as good. Right. Um, there are things about, you know, if for certain anatomic variants, bicuspid aortic stenosis, where there's only two leaflets, mm -hmm. or other reasons if you've had a rheumatic fever as a child and the valve is narrowed because of that, there are reasons that you know, we have to look at that sometimes the TAVR procedure may not be the best option for those right. reasons. Right. Um, you know, and sometimes, so sometimes surgery is still a better option. Okay, a lot that goes into it. A uh, question from Kate on Facebook. Uh, had TAVR done in July by Dr. Azemi, Tal Azemi at Hartford Hospital, we know him. Mm -hmm. Dr. Azemi well, was awesome throughout the process. Kudos to the entire TAVR team, the structural heart team, uh, for being so awesome. They are all wonderful, thoughtful, and available to answer any questions or concerns before or after TAVR. Well, it doesn't get any better than no, that, No, thank right? you for the feedback. We yeah, really appreciate that. Thanks for that, uh, Kate. And Pauline has a question. How many TAVRs have been done at Hartford Hospital uh, just did the 1,000th procedure in April. So, you know, I don't 
<laughs> I don't have the up-to-date numbers. We're, I, it's over 1,200 at this point. Wow. Um, but I don't know the I don't know the exact numbers. I haven't checked in the last couple hours. Yeah, <laughs> the last couple of hours that could have gone up dramatically, That's right? right? Um, so, so tell us about um, in terms of the the valve itself um, when you actually implant this device. It's pretty small. It is pretty small. Um, there are different sizes because obviously everyone's different. Right. Everyone's heart's a different size. Mm -hmm. Valves are different sizes. Mm -hmm. So there is a range, mm -hmm. um, but the the valves are, you know, roughly an inch yeah. in size. You know, mm -hmm. they vary. Some are a little smaller, some are a little bigger, mm -hmm. um, but roughly about an inch in diameter. Mm -hmm. And those valves are then inside of a, a stent. Basically, it's a metal mesh that the valve is inside of, and that's what gets delivered into the body. The stent gets opened up inside the heart, and that's what holds it in place. Right. Um, and so, you know, there are two different type of types of tabber valves, mm -hmm. um, and they work a little differently, but the this, the process is similar. The idea is similar. It's mm -hmm. it's animal tissue, so it's a bioprosthetic valve made out of animal tissue that creates the actual leaflets, the actual valve, and then that's sewn basically sewn into a metal frame, a stent mm -hmm. that'll is the framework for the valve that holds it into place. Okay. We have some questions, anonymous um, questions from viewers. Do I have to get dental clearance before having this procedure? So we obviously, we, you know, that's an individualized question. We do generally get dental clearance before undergoing valve replacement. Um, the reason for that is that when you have a prosthetic valve inside your heart, there's always a risk that it can get infected. Mm -hmm. The risk is very low, mm -hmm. but anytime you have any prosthetic material inside the body, that mm -hmm. there's always a risk. Mm -hmm. When you have dental work, even just a tooth cleaning, you get bacteria from your mouth gets into your blood. Mm -hmm. Now, your immune system clears it out. It doesn't usually cause infections, but anytime you have anything foreign in your body, right. an artificial joint, mm -hmm. an artificial valve, mm -hmm. you know, something that's not normally there, mm -hmm the bacteria can stick to it. Mm -hmm. And so we like to make sure that there's no problems with your teeth before that would need any work done before undergoing the procedure because we don't like to do have any dental work for at least six months after you have a valve replacement, mm -hmm. whether it's open heart surgery or the TAVR or procedure. The TAVR procedure. So we want to make sure there's no active infections or anything that's going to put you at risk for developing an infection on mm -hmm. the valve. And then also I would imagine monitoring after the procedure and this may be why patients stay in the hospital for rejection of the valve? So luckily there is really it, the valve doesn't get rejected so doesn't. unlike you a transplant where you're putting in a living organ mm -hmm. and your immune system can attack it mm -hmm. you know for kidney transplant liver mm -hmm. transplant heart transplant mm -hmm. requires medications to suppress the immune system pr to prevent rejection mm -hmm. in this case even though the it's it's tissue mm -hmm. it's been treated and kind of cleaned and treated and sterilized if you you won't you know to put it kind of one way right. it's not rejected by the body it because it's tissue and it's not you know it's, it's not, not a, a permanent foreign, object right yeah. it's not made out of metal or plastic right. it will eventually wear out mm -hmm. um, the tissue will eventually break down mm -hmm. um, and so which is why they you know don't they don't last forever right but it's not rejected so it's in that case you don't need any anti-rejection medications there's no steroids or any medications for you know immune suppression things like that okay good to know another question an anonymous question is it safe to get an x-ray or mri done after you have had a tabber it is um it is safe so x-rays you will actually get an x-ray immediately after the tabber procedure mm -hmm. um just because we want to look and make sure that you know everything is stable after the procedure uh, and they are mri safe Mm -hmm. Okay, Kathy asks on Facebook, there was an article in the paper saying TAVR is better than open heart surgery. What are your thoughts on that? It depends on the patient, right? It does. Everyone's different. Um, and so what that was may have been referring to was that, so the low risk trial showed that the in, at the points they looked at for these, the low risk trials for both these, for the two different TAVR valves, showed that at the one to two year mark, you know, the risk of dying from the procedure uh, was lower than compared to open heart surgery, mm -hmm. um, which is not a surprise. It's a less invasive mm -hmm. procedure. What it does, what we don't know is kind of is the longer term results of that. We know from the high risk and intermediate risk that eventually those are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. You know, at about five years, the, the outcomes are very similar between the procedures. Long term, as we mentioned before, we don't know. 
Mm -hmm. um, we don't know kind of because things that we don't know, the taver valves just haven't been around long enough for no, to us to know the right. durability and long term. And, and what is long enough to really know? So that's that's a good question, um, and we don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do know that the the current generation of surgical valves, so the tissue valves we put in with open heart surgery, last about 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you're probably looking at that length of time to determine, you know, whether or not the durability is as good with the taver valves. Right, and and so essentially, when you when we talk um, uh, conventional surgery or taver uh, surgery, what happens after that 15? to 20 year range in, in conventional methods, does does that begin to narrow again over that opening? How, what happens? So there? it can, it can be a similar process to you know the original valve, right. it can get hardened and calcified mm -hmm. and the leaflets can stop moving and, and it can narrow. It can also start to break down, it can degrade or tear and cause the valve to leak. Mm -hmm. um, both, you know, both can happen. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends, everyone's, you know, Obviously, I've been saying this a lot, but everyone's a little different. Um, so, but you know, it can be either of those methods of failure. Mm -hmm. And can the can it narrow over the um, the opening or, or where the implantable device is? Right. So, I guess the question is: is can can you be, get a narrowing inside the stent, right. like you could in, like, say, the coronary arteries right. or something else like that? Because of the size and mm -hmm. of the valve of the valve and the stent and the location, that doesn't happen. It's There's larger. no ingrowth into the stent. It doesn't narrow. It's mm -hmm. it is just the mechanical portion, the actual leaflets mm -hmm. um, that eventually mm -hmm. fail. Okay. Another question is: Is your heart stopped during uh, a TAVR procedure? Do you go on bypass? So you do not. Um, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big differences between open heart yeah. surgery and, and TAVR. Um, TAVR does not require using the heart lung machine. There's no cardiopulmonary bypass. The heart does not need to be stopped. Um, we do put in a temporary pacemaker wire. Mm -hmm. We basically put a small wire through an IV that gets mm -hmm. goes into the heart. That way we can tr control the heart rate during the procedure. Um, we can make it faster to mm -hmm. basically stabilize things while the valve goes in, but the heart is not stopped. Yeah, and, and that's probably why that people with high risk you know, could not have open heart surgery right, because right. you would have to put them on bypass. Exactly. The risk of open heart surgery is a combination of, you know, bigger incisions, mm -hmm. you know, longer healing, but also requiring cardiopulmonary bypass, stopping the heart. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And some of the things, the benefit of TAVR procedure is that some of those things can be avoided. And one last question, you know, we're on the, the leading edge of this new um, procedure, this minimally invasive procedure for high risk and low risk patients and really all types of patients, uh, depending on, on what their status is. We've come so far in this and, you know, selected as a study. Where do you see the future of heart valve surgery going? We've come far already. Where, where do we go from here? Right, yeah, so minimally invasive, you know, access procedures like TAVR are definitely the, the future of heart valve surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, this is be going to become more common, more prevalent. Um, we're, you know, we're currently working on developing, you know, this type of valve replacement for other valves in the heart. You know, the next step will be the mitral valve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are devices currently, you know, under investigation that are being worked on for mitral valve replacement. And there's going to be newer generation of, you know, these TAVR valves. We're on the second generation of these valves. They're already much better than they were almost 20 years ago when they were first developed. And they're going to continue to improve. You know, the indications are going to continue to widen and this is going to become more and more common. Lots more to come. Well, Dr. Yaffe, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have patients to see this afternoon, so we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. We've learned so much, and we've got such great questions yes. today, right? We definitely have. So well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Any times. And thank you, of course, for joining us today. If you would like more informa information on TAVR, you can call 833-444-0014. I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. It was a pleasure. We'll see you soon.